so I am uh, 53 now. I went back to school when I was 48. Mm -hmm. um, I have been married for 32 years to the greatest man on the planet. And I will fight you. Prove me wrong. Um, I, uh, I have three beautiful children. I have two adorable, gorgeous little grand girls, granddaughters. And um, I live in Southern Oregon right now. And um, uh, that's about it. Like, <laughs> honestly, that, that's about it. Now, why I went back to school? It's a couple different things kind of like come together to make it happen. Um, first, my youngest child left for school. I was a stay-at-home mom, and, and, which I loved every minute of. I, do, I loved it. I don't regret it. It was the greatest thing in the world. It was my purpose. It was why I was born, I think. And um, I, my youngest daughter went to school, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, um, now what do I do? What do I do when I grow up? What do I want to be when I grow up? And I knew that I needed, I had uh, no marketable skills whatsoever, like none. I, when I, the last job I had, I used DOS. So I wow. did not, like, I did not have, like, you know, I knew how to use a computer, but like the word proficient in Word and Excel and that kind of stuff was not what I was. And so I knew I was going to have to get some kind of training if I wanted to get a job. And then my daughter came home from college after the first semester and she was just so excited about what she was learning. She was telling me all this stuff. She's like, mom, this and this. And she was just super excited. And I was jealous. I was totally jealous. I was like, I don't want to be done learning. I want to learn stuff. And I realized, you know, as an adult, you realize you have gaps in things that you don't know about. And I wasn't an uneducated person. I wasn't somebody who did, I read a lot. I knew what was going on in the world. I wasn't like, you know, just because I don't college education doesn't mean, you know, I didn't know you know, basic things. And, but I didn't know a lot about art. I didn't know about philosophy, like stuff like that. And I, and I started getting this like vision of going to college and like sitting around a table and discussing ideas and debating things. And I, I naively thought my life experience would somehow hold water, you know, if I had these discussions. And so, I mean, I got like, okay, I'm like doing this. I'm going to go back to school. And then at least maybe I'll fall in love with something end up getting a degree in that and then pursuing a career in that. That was kind of like the hope. So I decided to kind of just dip my toes in, I took a couple classes the first semester. And I on purpose took a class um, in um, a humanities class about the Renaissance period because my husband and I had a trip planned and we're going to be spending time in Florence and Rome. And so I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I'm going to know about the architecture and the art. And I was going to feel like I'm going to be so educated when I go to Europe. Um, so I walk into class, you know, of course, at my personal backpack, my binder, my little things, my highlighters, I'm like ready to go. And I walk into class and he hands everybody a handout. And so, you know, I'm like, okay. So I, I sit down by myself, I look down and it says 14 reasons why Donald Trump is a fascist. <laughs> and I'm like, am I, I thought it was, am I in the right class? I thought this was about the Renaissance. What in the world does this have to do with Donald Trump? And um, so at this point, this was the spring of 2016. So he was, you know, it was well in the campaign was going on. So the, so the professor proceeded to literally what I ended up calling sermons. They would preach and he would stand up there and he would preach. And he preached through this thing, which is, I guess, based off of an article written 2003, I think, by a guy named Bright. And it was just the 14 characters of fascist. And then he you know, wanted to prove to all of us that Donald Trump meet these characteristics. But as somebody who, you know, I will thank my parents for teaching me to not believe everything I'm told and to literally like research things. And I think that's part of being a Christian mm -hmm. is my, you know, if a, if a pastor told us something, we didn't automatically, believe, you weren't supposed to automatically believe it. You had to go check it out and see if it was really true. And I think that's like helped my critical thinking. So I was like, this looks too specifically like Donald Trump, like too specifically like Donald Trump. So I went home, which I ended up doing pretty much after every class I ever attended in school and Googled what they told me. And I literally put one, four and a C and it was 40 characters of a fascist. So I looked it up and I was even smart enough to look up a few different versions to make sure it was the right version. <laughs> and I compared the two, what he gave us and what was on what the actual article was. He changed little words, like he changed little things and just skewed it just enough. So it was still kind of true, but it was like 
the only one I remember is like nepotism, but he put like daughter, son, son-in-law. Like, so he made it just that much more specific about Donald Trump. And so being who I am and naive and kind of, I don't know, brave maybe, I uh, printed that out, made a copy of his, circled the differences and laid it on his desk. <laughs> and um, I didn't put my name on it or anything, but apparently he figured out who it was that was doing these things because um, I didn't know that I just put a huge target on my back. It was, it was a big target. And he spent the rest of the semester, you know, bully is a big word to me. So I would say more like try to humiliate me, try to embarrass me, try to discredit me for sure. And I remember a time that we were talking about, obviously we talked about a lot about uh, Catholicism and which, you know, by the way, is different than evangelical Christianity, but um, he put me in that and I, that was fine. I, didn't, I have a problem with that. So he says, one day he says to me, he's like, so Don, the token Christian in the room, and he would do this to me all the time. He called me out by name in the middle of lectures all the time. So um, explain Calvinism. I bet you know, do you know, do you even know what Calvinism, Calvinism is? It's a huge part of your religion. And I was like, okay, luckily, thank goodness. Again, shout out to my parents for teaching me more than just, you know, Bible verses, like history and doctrine and stuff. I knew what it was. And so I was like, you know, in simplest terms, Calvin believes that um, God chooses who goes to heaven, who goes to hell. And he was like, do you believe that, Don? Do you believe that God sends people to hell? And um, I said, well, actually, no, I'm an Arminianist, And I believe that God chooses everyone and they choose whether they choose God or not. And you can see like the disappointment on his face. He wanted to get me so bad. And thank goodness that he, uh, I, I knew what he was talking about. And then, and then another time, we were talking about uh, the Muslim religion, because again, in the Renaissance. Um, and so he's like, oh, and by the way, Dawn, more Americans have been killed by white males than Muslims. I was like, oh, okay. And then I'm like, yeah. That does not sound right to me. So again, go. And the funny thing is, I had no problem ever finding the information that they, like the, the things that they said, the statistics that they did. I, I, I never had a problem finding it. They were right there. And so the statistic actually said, since 2001, left that out. Mm. More, uh, more Americans were killed by white males, not Christian white males than Muslims. He literally added Christian and uh, took away um, and took away the 2001. So and as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself, okay, at the end of this class, if I'm an 18 year old kid, I have Donald Trump's a fascist. He is there. You know, it's on, it's on paper. He proved it. Um, you know, God sends people to hell. And I, white Christian males are very dangerous. Like literally those, just those little things that they would just do those little mm -hmm. things that would just, if you didn't know the difference, you would be like, Oh yeah. Okay. And, and yeah, that was one class. Well, and you had the foresight really to, or the life experience rather to double check what this guy was saying, because something obviously like didn't hit you as like, this is not, this is not the entire truth to the situation. So I just want to put a really fine to, I want to put a fine point on what happened in this one particular circumstance. You walk into a class about the Renaissance, expecting to learn about the Renaissance. You get immediately handed a lesson about Donald Trump being a fascist. You then go do your own research, find out that the professor modified the article that he handed out to try to be make it more convincing but not necessarily basing it in any grounded fact about what is a fascist and you you fought back against him and for for thanks of uh pointing out that he was modifying articles that he was giving to college students he proceeded to spend the rest of the course trying to humiliate you yes that, that was my summary? first class. yeah that was perfect <laughs> that was it yeah, and that was my first class.